I'm Richie Suave Flores. And I'm Corey Crenshaw. And this is Sporty with Corey and Richie Suave. Center field, the Diamondbacks are world champions. Down is the motion man. Little flip to Fitzgerald, he scores! And the Cardinals win an amazing game. Mikael Bucker with a chance, he walks in, he scores! Mikael Bucker for the second straight game is the hero. Welcome back in Sporty Nation. It is episode number 10. Yes, you guessed it. We have made it to double digits. We're finally there and we're pretty excited about the fact that we've finally made it through 10 episodes without killing each other, you know. Dominic isn't here today, but I mean, it's probably because he's actually got work to do. But I mean, you know, he could be dead. So you never know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's terrible of you, Corey. We can't just watch. Lose. Just watch the season finale of Game of Thrones. Sorry. Oh, okay. There we go. That's 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 why. Yes. Uh, we will not live on a leave on a cliffhanger here on episode ten. Remember, we should start doing that. What do cliffhanger? Start leaving everybody on cliffhangers at the end of each episode. Have season finales. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Season one, episode 10. Uh, we're going to throw a banger of a party later on. Everybody's invited. Mm-hmm. Don't know where it's going to be. We're going to watch the ASU game. Probably actually we're going to go with Zips. And we can uh, throw a whole party and watch the ASU game. And hopefully uh, Todd Graham doesn't blow it. Exactly. Yeah. We, uh, we need to get into Todd Graham eventually on this game show. We already have w- once before, but we're taping on Saturday today. So we haven't seen the game yet. So that's the only reason we're not talking about it today. Or else we would talk about spend... 30 minutes explaining why Todd Graham should have been fired three years ago. Uh, yeah, but we've basically already did that, but we we really like to uh, get our frustrations exactly. out on the show here. Yeah, so what do we got coming up on, uh, on today? We will be talking about the Diamondbacks. I know we've been talking about them a lot, but, you know, record-breaking stuff lately. So we'll be talking about them. We will be talking about... Um, w- sports media bias and what we have against it so Mm -hmm. basically it will be sports media bashing on sports media we can do that Mm -hmm. that's totally okay it'll it'll be pretty good (laughs) and then in my corner i'll be talking about nfl celebrations and then richie will be talking about this is actually questionable in your Dick of the Week because well, you... I'm not going to tell you what it is now. you got to keep listening to get to Dick of the Week. Okay, okay. That's what, that's true. Very good point. It's something that I'm very fired up about, though. Mm, you're very fired it's, up about uh, it. I will tease this. It's NFL-related. Oh. Yeah. So I was going to say, he he told me what it was last night, and then he started to backtrack on it a little <laughs> bit. So I don't know if it's like his his half Dick of the Week, his partial <laughs> Dick of the Week. Dick of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's get into the uh, the Diamondbacks here momentarily. So uh, on Friday night it was Coyotes night at the ballpark. So uh, Derek Stepan threw out the first pitch. Louis Domingue was there, and so was I. Be- uh, oh, um, Lawson Kraus as well, the big big winger. So it's it's, it's always cool to kind of have local sports teams kind of coming together like that, right? Oh, yeah, it's really nice to sh- see all the support that's been going on lately. I have actually been really impressed by all of it because of the fact that, you know, uh, Phoenix Rising, which mm-hmm. many people may not know about, is our soccer team here. And uh, they actually went to a D-backs game, mm-hmm. and then they gave some tickets to some D-backs employees to come to their match. And then, you know, as you had mentioned, there was Coyotes Night on uh, yesterday, uh, which would be the 8th, depending on when you're watching this. And then um, they're doing the D-back Suns on the 12th. And then, you know, during, I'm guessing the Suns are probably going to have a D-back night now because the Coyotes always have a D-back night. Coyotes so. always wear the, uh, like, the Diamondbacks inspired jerseys, which are pretty cool every year. And they always auction those off for charity. Yeah, it's really cool to see them supporting each other, especially in this market, I feel like a lot of times fans aren't as dedicated as they should be in this market. I've, I've said it many times before, and I'll say it again. I think it'll probably be better coming up with this generation of people who grew up with these teams being here mm-hmm. as opposed to people who didn't have – like I am a by birth a Vikings fan right. because my dad was born in Minnesota and uh, the Cardinals weren't here yet. So he was a Vikings fan before he was a Cardinals fan. Mm-hmm. So, you know – 
those type of things will kind of, I think, go away a little bit now that the uh, the teams have been here for, you know, a good 20 years. And those people are now turning 20 and, you know, and the, the maybe 25 probably in there. You know, once you probably get to about six, seven, you start to remember whatever team you're cheering yeah. for before. But as soon as they start having kids and they're raising their kids that way, I think it's really going to be a stronger market here. But for right now, the fact that everyone is supporting each other because of the fact that we do have a weaker fan base, I think is a good idea. That's cool. I mean, it's really cool to, to have like sports cross paths because then you have that that crossing of, of fan bases. So maybe you're a huge baseball fan. You grew up here, you know, watching the Diamondbacks, but you're not that much of a hockey fan. Well, you know, having Lawson Krauss or Louis Domingue or Derek Stepan, you know, on a Diamondbacks broadcast up in the booth with Bob and Bert or, you know, on the field doing in-game interviews with, with Mike and Vanessa at Chase Field. Um, it's, it's, it can only be a good thing for, like, the Coyotes. And like you mentioned, I mean, they've been here for 20 years now. And so now the kids who, like Austin Matthews is the perfect example, wouldn't even be playing in the National Hockey League if it weren't for the Coyotes. And it's people of his generation who were born in the mid-'90s, like yourself, you know, who are now starting to grow up as fans of the Coyotes and the fan base is going to grow stronger because of that. Actually, let's make that a plea for uh, don't ever take the Coyotes out of Arizona because the N- the NHL needs it. Uh huh. Uh huh. One of the uh, best players to come into the league in a little while now came out because he loved the Coyotes. So you know, mm-hmm. never leave Arizona because the youth in uh, Arizona hockey is definitely growing and becoming something great. And Austin Matthews is reaching a, a whole nother level, other than being just your Calder Trophy winner. He's getting his own, like, little pop figurine, even. Like, that's Ooh. how you know you've gone, like, super big league, is if you're getting your own pop figure. Are you going to get it? Are yes. you going to add it to your Arrow pop universe? I absolutely am. It's going to sit right next to uh, Barry and Oliver and Felicity and Diggle. Uh, yes, you've got to now Austin Matthews. cross superheroes <laughs> and sports because Austin sports Matthews, is superheroes. Austin Matthews is kind of a superhero in his own right on the ice, at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But let's let's get back on track. We're we're gonna go on so many damn tangents on this freaking show today. It's not even funny. But let's get back to the freaking Diamondbacks, which is why we wanted to. So they're thirteen and two since the last time we talked about them. The last time we talked about them on this show was the third game of the uh, Minnesota Twin series when they got blown out and they were in a losing streak. Since then, they've had a thirteen game win streak and they're thirteen and two. So the jinx is over. We can start talking about them again. But it's been an incredible run the last two weeks for the Arizona Diamondbacks, hasn't it? Oh, it's been extraordinary. That 13-game streak was actually a franchise yeah. record for them. So that's awesome. You know, they haven't been anywhere near that since 2003. So, you know, a good, what is that, 14 years? I hate math. Um, <laughs> but, you know, where nothing had even come close to that. So I just, it's really nice to see that out of this team. It's It really sucks that we couldn't have kept up the uh, mm-hmm. innings that we were ahead. Uh, because that one... I think the only team that was above the Diamondbacks was the Yankees, and it was back in way back, yeah, back in, in the, the day. 40s, yeah. yeah. So it would have been really nice if they could have gotten there. I think they got to, what, 98, and they had to beat 100. Yeah. So that was a little rough, but it was really cool, the records that they've been breaking lately. Um, a, the game against the Padres, though, that was a little bit <laughs> questionable. I mean, after we had talked about... Corbin, uh, that's why we keep on just crapping on people on the show, I feel like, is so that way they'll turn He'll their life around. do very well. Yeah, because after we did that to Corbin, he was doing really well. And then he had uh, an eight runs against him. Like, eight runs against him. He has not been anywhere near that. Yeah, he had an 0-5-0 ERA in his past, like, four starts in August before that, before Friday night's game. It's pretty impressive. And... Yet he gave up eight runs last night. The Padres, who are not a good baseball team at all. No, but although when the Dodgers were going on their hot streak, what was the one team that could always beat the Dodgers? It was the the Padres. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what magical voodoo they have, but they've been able to take the team that's doing the best at the time and knock them down a notch. So I don't know. That's pretty cool for them. I mean, the Dodgers, we all know, are slowly plummeting they're at a uh, you know eight losses in a row mm-hmm. so um now that we're the big dogs we kind of have to keep pumping that up <laughs> yeah and before we get to your corner real quickly uh just 
you know, for heads up for the Sporty Nation, it's going to be an interesting race to watch as far as, like, the Diamondbacks aren't going to win the division. It's They've dropped 12 games from the Dodgers lead, but they're not going to win the division. It's They're most likely going to end that first spot in the wild card. But the biggest thing to me that I'm, I, I'm watching is with the Dodgers' decline, are the Washington Nationals going to be able to do enough to pass them for the top spot in the National League? And that's a big, a big thing for me because if the Nationals get that top spot, the Diamondbacks would play the Nationals in the NLDS and not the Dodgers, and that is a bad matchup for the Diamondbacks and the Nationals. No, I would much rather the Diamondbacks play the Dodgers. hundred percent, they have, you know, they know exactly what they need to do to beat the Dodgers. Whereas I'm not sure they would have the ability to against the Nationals. Yeah, it's time now to take a jaunt into Corey's corner. All right, so for my Corey's Corner this week, I am talking about, drumroll, celebrating in football. So mine is mostly about celebrating in the NFL and the fact that um, I feel like it's overdone. And uh, I put out a a Twitter poll the other day um, asking whether, you know, our Twitter followers thought that it focused way too much on individual achievements as opposed to team achievements. And I kind of feel that that is partly the case. Honestly, there's not the need for so much celebrating. As a coach, you should tell your players that there's no need to celebrate every single tackle, especially when you're not wrapping up people. (laughs) When you're tackling, you're just trying to hit them and knock them out of bounds. Half the time doesn't actually work. And doing a a basic tackle is something that you should know from like pop warner like you should know from the beginning of time how to do a basic tackle it shouldn't be something that should be celebrated or something that you should waste a bunch of time with so it could it what it most likely ends up with is you end up getting a penalty because you're excessively celebrating and what's the point of that so i understand in situations where there's touchdowns or there's a really meaningful sack. Um, I don't think on every sack because if you have a, a sack and then that quarterback comes up and throws a bomb of a pass and that ends up resulting in a touchdown, that sack did not even matter. A lot of times I see this happening against Tom Brady. Tom Brady can bomb his throws and he's probably one of the greatest of all time. Just because you sacked him once doesn't mean it's going to jar him for his next throw. So it doesn't mean that you need to be celebrating about it when it could possibly not even matter. So my uh, my problem with it is the fact that I feel like it not only celebrates an individual achievement instead of a team achievement, but also it distracts from the gameplay. So only celebrate when it's needed and there's actual achievement that the team has made and it's made a difference in the gameplay itself. But that is my opinion on uh, celebrating in football uh, let me know what yours is and uh leave a comment down below uh cory i won't spend too much time on this but that was actually one of your best Corey's corners that was actually really well done really well said thank you but i do i'm i do have to disagree with you for on i here's the, the one point i do agree with you on is that um celebrating after a, a sack and uh, say like on a second down play and it brings up you know a third and five and then the next play is a touchdown I understand that part. That was actually a really good point on your part. But the point that I want to make is that, look, I watch sports because it's entertaining. I watch sports because it's fun. I watch sports because I want to have a good time. And part of that good time is watching players have fun, watching players, you know, be themselves, you know, on the field, having some fun. That's the whole point of celebrating to me. It's having fun. It's, you know, putting the fun back in sports like like it should be instead of, the stupid no fun league NFL where you can't even shoot a bow and arrow after an interception. So my, my, my basic point on this whole thing is, is look, if you don't like celebrating as far as, you know, if you're an opposing team, then don't throw the interception. Don't allow the sack. Don't give up the touchdown. Don't allow the home run. Don't give up a goal. Simple as that. So as a fan, you would be okay that if your team got in trouble for excessive celebration and got a penalty and it ended up costing them points in the game, you would be okay with that because you think that the celebrating is that big. And also, my other point that I wanted to make, are do you on a daily basis, when you stop at every single stop sign during the day, go, woo, I just stopped at a stop sign, yummy, woo. No, because you're stopping at a stop sign. But it's everyday things, just like a tackle. A tackle is an everyday thing in football. 
That's actually a good point. But now, now, see, here's what's going to happen now. <laughs> see, now, next time when we come to the show next week, every time, you know, I, next time I drive into the show here, every time I stop somewhere, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Just roll down my freaking windows and start blasting Taylor Swift and start dancing. Hey, it, it might make your days more exciting, more pleasurable. <laughs> you never know. Uh, but, yeah, do, do let us know what you think on the whole celebration thing. I think it's an interesting discussion. I mean, the NFL has kind of changed their rules this year. As far as it's concerned, just a tiny bit, um, uh, we're interested to hear what you say. But I want to go back quickly to the Dodgers and Nationals conversation for just a moment. Um, and because you didn't get really a chance to respond to kind of what I was saying, which is the fact that I'd rather play the Dodgers despite their ridiculous, you know, 49-1 and one that they were for the longest time. And the fact that they were on, for the longest time, were on pace to set the single season record for wins by a team. Um, and I want to play the Dodgers instead of the Nationals. And you you agree with me, right? Yeah. I The team has seen the Dodgers so much more than they've seen the Nationals. And the fact that they are such big rivals, it makes for such a better game and so much better for like a fan base as well. So I feel like in general, not only for the team, but for fan bases too, it's probably the better way to go because it is such an intense rivalry. I mean, we've been in the middle of the fact of people literally ripping each other apart over the fact that they are Dodger fans mm-hmm. or D-backs fans. It's a relatively ruthless. But I think, too, it says dividends in the fact that Goldie was out for those three games against the Dodgers, and they still were able to sweep the Dodgers. Yeah. And that's the second time that they've swept the Dodgers in a row. And they're the only team or the first team to sweep the Dodgers this season. Right. So I think in that regard, it's probably a much better idea for the Diamondbacks to play the Dodgers as opposed to the Nationals. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it goes it comes down to this for me. Who would you rather face? Um, would you rather face a, a, a lineup that has Yasiel Puig and Cody Bellinger and a bunch of other you know players who are decent? Justin Turner, another one who blocked Baxter on Twitter, of all things. Or would you rather face um, Ryan Zimmerman and Bryce Harper? I would very much rather face people like Yasiel Puig, who gets bored and starts counting uh, the planes in the top (laughs) of Chase Field because he's not uh, paying attention to the game, which, you know, a ball was hit his way and he completely messed that up because he wasn't paying attention to the actual game. It's okay. I understand you have a really big lead and so the game didn't matter that much, Mm -hmm. but look how much you've spiraled since then. And that was the first um, sweep of uh, L.A. Yeah. That that had happened in. And uh, I honestly think it is so ridiculous how bored some of these Dodger players have looked going through these games. You're supposed to be one of the best teams in the MLB and you are just succumbing to the fact that you yeah, are there's... terrible and you're getting kicked out of games. That was before he had... Uh, blocked Baxter yeah you know you're acting like giant babies you can't (laughs) everyone goes through like problems and I had said in one of my Corey's corner it's about perseverance whether the whether the Dimebacks were going to do well this season was whether they could persevere through Mm -hmm. their slump and come back out of it and that's the problem the Dimebacks did come out of their slump the Dodgers are being too big of babies and they're not able to come out of theirs. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to face Max Scherzer in the in the postseason. Just keep me as far away from two eyes Max Scherzer as possible. And yes, I do call him two eyes because he has the the two different colored eyes. Oh yeah, what's the actual like name like name for that? It's like uh, I don't know. For, we'll put it in in post. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll ha- we'll have to ask our uh, our crew member, future PA Scotty over there, what it is. <laughs> after the segment yeah exactly uh so uh, part of the reason i kind of remember we wanted to talk about the dodgers and and the nationals is is this idea of of earlier in the week basically the diamondbacks as good as they have been lately on that 13 game win streak they're still not getting attention as far as national media is concerned right and the biggest the, the thing that caught our eye this week was an mlb power rankings that both of us saw and and freaked out quite a bit over yeah so four days ago and today is a uh, nine nine, so that would be nine five. They had posted a uh, their power rankings, and it went uh, counting down. I guess five Chicago Cubs, four Washington Nationals, 
three Houston Astros, two Cleveland Indians, and one the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> and then said underneath it, American League is rising. You kidding me? I, like, I I understand. There's a team missing from there, is our whole point. Well, and it just, the fact that they, they lean on the American League so much to, like, oh, let's point out that the American League is rising. We get notifications, I get notifications on my Apple Watch all day long about the American League. When are you going to actually pay attention to other people? And I also get all these things all the time about the Dodgers. When the Dodgers were doing well, everyone and their mother wanted to talk about the Dodgers. Yeah. The, the Diamondbacks are doing well, and it wasn't popping up anywhere, and they're not even on that list, not even close. How they the Cubs are above them is literally beyond me, beyond my knowledge. I agree. I 100% agree. And the thing, too, like, first of all, the Indians should have been number one on that list. As of Saturday when we're taping, they've won 17 games in a row, which is, only, I believe, three shy of the 2002 Oakland Athletics money ball. I don't – I mean, the look, the Dodgers are in, are in their slump right now, but I – I don't, I don't understand why the national media isn't just in love with this Diamondbacks team right now. Especially, you know, J.D. Martinez is having the second half of his freaking life. He's going to get his ass paid in the offseason. We don't really have time to talk about J.D. Martinez in this show. Maybe we'll do it in a future episode in terms of whether or not, you know, the merits of bringing him back or not. Obviously, we'd love to have him back, right? But it's just a money thing. Yeah. Do they have enough money? Yeah, it, it, Yasmani Tomas. Way, way too much money that we're yeah. paying. That was money $16 too much. million, dollars, I believe, they're on the hook for. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, yeah, I tweeted that out the other day, actually, about how much we actually, like, still owe him and everything. And it's insane in the fact that he, you know, he's not even playing. Mm -hmm. And he's still, we're still shelling out a ton of <laughs> money for him. So I'm not too happy about that, but I'm not even going to go into that one on this. But, I mean, in general... That's one of my biggest problems with sports media is in the fact that there are certain teams and there are certain sports that get focused on more than others. Mm -hmm. Many, many years, as big of hockey fans as we are, we have complained about the fact that Sports Center and all of those never show hockey. They yeah. will show basketball until their eyes bleed, but they won't show hardly any hockey unless mm -hmm. it's something amazing that just happened. Yeah, it's uh, you see Barry Melrose come on like during the Stanley Cup playoffs, and that's about it. And it's and it sucks, and it sucks for the sport because that's my biggest my biggest gripe with the NHL. Not I'm just digging rabbit hole after rabbit hole here, but is the fact that nobody's watching them on NBC. They're never gonna get the uh, people's eyeballs on their sport unless it's ESPN. Let's be honest, ESPN is still the biggest you know name in sports. You know, despite that, you know, sports centers lost its edge. But that's where you go for, you know, your NBA playoffs. They have Monday Night Football still. That's still where people go for most of their sports other than their, you know, their phones. Right. So it, it, it sucks. It's stupid. But that's that's what I that's like why we're here is to talk about the NHL and stuff that, you know, and the Diamondbacks. We, we want to talk about stuff that that, you know, the national media doesn't. Yeah, they, we will definitely be the people that will, you can come to to cover things that are very local, Arizona, and things that aren't covered as much because of the fact that it's not the high money, high eye, you know, viewership, things like that, and the things that, you know, they really want to talk about on any of those different, mm -hmm. you know, I, I literally don't even hardly watch SportsCenter that much anymore because of the fact that they don't have really anything. But, I mean, at the end, it's... It's just lucky for us because it means that we get to cover the things that they neglect to cover. Exactly. Like these two things we're going to talk about next, which is Antonio Cromarty and his stupid sperm and the cheating Boston Red Sox. I wouldn't particularly say that his sperm is stupid considering the fact that after his vasectomy, he was able to have yet another kid, which would be number 14, ladies and gentlemen, and six with this woman. This is this is impressive. This is this story just boggles the mind because I feel like we're talking about it every nine months to a year. We're talking about Antonio Cromartie having another damn kid. And here's the thing. Here's the funny thing about this. So uh, several years ago, the New York Jets were on Hard Knocks, the HBO's Hard Knocks, the like the training camp thing, and they were asking Antonio Cromartie, "Can you name all of your kids?" <laughs> At the time, he had tw I think twelve or whatever, and he couldn't name all of his kids. Like it took him ninety seconds. 
to run through all of his kids' names. And so that's why this got famous. And then after that interview is when he supposedly got snipped, got a vasectomy, so no more kids. And then out pops, you know, three more since then. Well, it, it it's very rare, but it can grow back. So, I mean, it he apparently grew back and was able to have more children, but that's a hell of a lot of children. I mean, 14 kids, damn. <laughs> exactly. So he's had three kids in this vasectomy. The third, the third one was just born at the end of August. So congratulations to the Cromarties on the on the new kid. But here's the thing. So um, Tamika or Tarika, Tarika Cromarty. <laughs> Tamika, Tarika, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Uh, she was actually quoted as, to Us Weekly was saying, we are 100% done. Absolutely, positively done with having kids. Uh, adding a, this joke about being celibate. We've been blessed with these guys, but adding to it, I think it would kill us both. Meaning having another kid. Well, I mean, I think uh, after going through six pregnancies, uh, she's probably done being pregnant. Yeah, you'd imagine. Yeah. I mean, that many times of hormones and like actual child labor and all that stuff. I, I would be done much earlier. So um, I give her props for going through the six that she's already gone through. Yeah, so to Antonio Cromartie is a scientific marvel. We'll figure I'm not I'm not a scientist, so I don't know why this is happening, but I'm sure there's articles out there about it. You can read them elsewhere. But um, let's move on from sperm to the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably one of the worst <laughs> transitions. transitions I have ever heard. I mean, ah. ever heard. So, you know, when, when Rishi hits it big, everyone... Um, you got to <laughs> clip this off and then be able to show him that, see how far you've come. <laughs> you've come from sperm and Red Sox to, oh God, that sounds like a very terrible masturbating joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are not. What is going on with this we show? We not going anywhere. God. All right. Let's, so the Red Sox were caught cheating, Corey. They were using an Apple Watch in their. They were using an Apple Watch in their in their dugout, uh, in their series against the New York Yankees, um, and the Yankees caught on to this, and so they told Major League Baseball about it, and it broke last week, and uh, and so that we're still trying to figure out what the fallout from this this cheating scandal is. And while you're still laughing, I'll take people through. Uh, what was going on here? So I'm crying over here, not just laughing. I'm crying, <laughs> but okay, keep going. So investigators confirmed accusations by the Yankees that a Red Sox trainer used his Apple Watch to receive messages from the team's video room about upcoming pitches, and then passed those messages to the dugout where they were signaled to teammates on the field. Uh, of course, look, sign stealing has been around for decades and decades. One of the most famous home runs in the history of baseball is Bobby Thompson shot heard around the world in 1951, the Dodgers and the Giants. The Giants beat the Dodgers in that game. And there have been many theories surrounding that home run that it wasn't the Giants were, in fact, stealing pitches uh, during that season. So, look, this to me, Corey, is, it's, it's technology. Technology is, you know, technology is always going to be ahead of the people who are trying to catch cheaters i.e. steroids. People got ahead of the curb and it just took people a while to catch up and figure out, oh, that's cheating. So this is actually <laughs> this is really smart by the Red Sox, honestly. If you're going to cheat, you're probably going to cheat in honestly the smartest way that you can. Yeah. I mean, why you're just a lazy cheater if you're not trying to constantly get better at cheating. It's like, you know, it's like everything else. I think a lot of times the the biggest problem I have with this is the fact that People are angry about the fact that they were using technology. Like, as if they weren't using technology, it wouldn't be a big deal. There is, like, a small thing in, I'm, in the MLB that talks about not using technology. But, I mean, it's kind of like the whole pine tar thing. It's not – if there is any type of penalty, it won't be anything too severe because a lot of times, you know, outside of uh, <clears throat> enhancing drugs, they don't really penalize that much for it. And it just – I, I don't understand. I, I get why people are angry, and especially Yankees fans, because, you know, that that's mainly who they were using this against, mm -hmm. because it was mostly a uh, Red Sox-Yankees rivalry that they were trying to get ahead of. But the thing I don't understand is why people are so surprised. 
everything evolves, you know. Mm-hmm. We went from the point where, you know, when we were kids um, on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, cell phones were yay big, had a giant antenna on them, and now they literally fit in the palm of your hand and you can surf the internet on them and do all these things. I can wear it on my wrist. All of these things, they eventually go higher and higher up on what you're able to do and the fact that people mm-hmm. are surprised that that's what this has morphed into does not make any sense to me because that's the logical transition it's the same thing as like kids cheating on tests it makes it so much easier now that you know you could technically have someone text you while you're taking a test and you can see it on your watch it's the same thing it's going to evolve and the fact that no one everyone's surprised like that someone actually took advantage of this is baffling to me because that was like the most common next move i think yeah that should have it should have come to Mm mm-hmm and I'm glad you mentioned the testing thing because I'm I'm reading the New York Times article here on the, on the whole scandal, and it was talking about cheating on tests and the uh, GRE. So it's students who try to take smart smartwatches into the GRE graduate admissions test are removed from the testing room, their fees forfeited, and their scores canceled. Oh, so people I can, are smart about that. I can attest to this. Um, uh, one of our crew members, this guy who wants to go into PA school over there, he uh, he's gone and taken the GRE twice mm-hmm. and has noted to me that each time they make you put all of your stuff into um, a basket so that way you can't cheat. Mm-hmm. And they are very particular about what, what you do, where you move. They're constantly watching you. They're actually having like video watching what you do while you're taking the test. So, I mean... it. In actual testing situations, and that's the GRE for people who don't know, it's a um, a graduate's test. So it's not yeah. just like going into PA school, but like if you're going to graduate school, you have to take it. So um, they're doing these things to prevent kids from cheating, but they don't think about doing that in sports. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Like I know everyone wants to say, like you know, the honor system or whatever. Cheating in every sport has been going on mm-hmm. since forever and it's not simply to be like i everyone and their mother wanted to say oh well another boston team is cheating ha 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 every team has cheated at some point in their career it's a matter of how good you are at not getting caught exactly like after the whole deflate gate thing everyone everyone wanted to be like ha ha they're they're the only cheaters no they're everyone's cheating in their own way just you know they the Yankees just happen to pick up on this. Mm-hmm. I think it's good that they did, though, because it allows other teams to protect themselves. They're learning. They can, um, you know, change up their signs. Instead of doing just one yeah. simple sign, they can change it last second to try and help uh, save themselves from this type of issue. So, obviously, it should have been brought to light, and it's definitely not morally right, but I'm just irritated by the fact that people were surprised about it. And I'm sorry, but if you are that surprised about it, you're probably old and afraid of change because it's something that was going to happen one way or another. Exactly. Look, the the fact of the matter is, as the technology continues to change, uh, it is my belief that in the next mm, two decades, I'll give it 20 years, uh, we're going to have robot umpires in Major League Baseball and, you know, who, those can be hacked, right? So just think just think of that. It's, it's far off. But, it, look, I, it, we can almost guarantee that's going to happen, that people are going to try and hack into these computers for balls and strikes. Like, if you were a team, wouldn't, wouldn't you do that? Wouldn't you try and hire a hacker to do that same exact thing to get an advantage? I, I think it depends on your morals. If you are a team... I would. Has, I, I wouldn't. I would do... I look. I would look if I knew I wasn't going to get caught, and if I'm really good at being a hacker, then damn right I'm going to freaking cheat and trying to hack hack into uh, machines to not, make sure that you know they're between balls and strikes. Not everything in this world is flisty smoke. Okay, <laughs> it's not an episode of Arrow. We're t- you're turning it this into a very horrible movie of Terminator, and uh, th- these robot umpires are not going to be like Terminator coming back to try and kill other teams here where I, I honestly would not do it out of moral reasons, but I mean, you do you Richie, if you, if you want to win that way. All right, let's move on from talking about the masturbation and cheating into my favorite segment of the week. It is now time for my dick of the week. 
And this week it goes out to you, Mr. Mustache Stan Kroenke. You are a freaking billionaire. You own three different sports teams, and yet you still can't find a way to find twenty million dollars to play one to pay one of the best players in the entire National Football League, Aaron Donald, who has held out of training camp up until finally Saturday when he finally reported to camp prior to the team's first game of the season against the Indianapolis Colts. And it's ridiculous, Stan, that you're not paying this guy by many, many people, scouts, stats. Aaron Donald is the most dominant player in the National Football League on the defensive line. The Rams are missing him humongously. And yet you still have the balls to play hardball with him for some reason, Stan Kroenke. I hope your mustache gets shaved and you just run and, and hide in your stupid Denver Nuggets playhouse, wherever the hell you are. Stan Kroenke, you are my dick of the week. And that's going to do it for our 10th episode of Sporty with Corey and Richie Suave. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this week. We'll talk to you again next time. Good night. We get sports, everybody.